Okay, in, uh, in this video I'm going to talk about the residual story drift, residual story drift, and this is actually going to be taken from ASCE 722, so we are talking about the latest version, minimum design loads and associated criteria for building and other structures, and this is actually going to be under section 16.4.1.3. Okay. This is going to be an important uh, issue because it was not existent before in the previous um, uh, version of ACE 716. It was not there. So this is why <clears throat> we are going to shed some lights on the residual story drift. Okay, now uh, let's go and read the item itself. Okay, as I said, it's new criteria regarding residual drift. I'm going to talk and explain what is the meaning of residual drift and it is added to chapter 16 which is related to nonlinear response history analysis so it is related to nonlinear time history analysis for those who are always conducting nonlinear time history analysis whether for their designs or for tool buildings or for research work and so on so I think that it is important to highlight the <coughs> important new criteria or new item that has been added to uh, ACE7. Under this section, which is titled with residual story drift, for structures exceeding 240 uh, foot or uh, 73 meters in height, it is considered to be a little like high building, okay, I mean that high-rise building for example. For some people it is considered to be like <clears throat> a tall building. Uh, we are going to have the mean, the word mean here, the mean residual story drift. The word mean here because uh, we are commonly, whenever we are estimating transient drift or inter story drift or residual story drift, we use at least 11 earthquakes according to the criteria of AC7 or above. This is the minimum. At least 11 uh, time history records that we need to use in our uh, analysis for the estimation of drifts in general. So whenever we think about or the word mean here means that the mean of 11 earthquakes. Residual story drift shall not exceed 0.01 HSX. HSX. HSX actually it is the height of story below level X which is the story height if we have the building for example if we have something like this this is the story height that we are talking about. Where residual story drift is taken as the maximum value of story drift in a structure at rest following response to an earthquake motion. And I'm going to explain it in a while in detail because this is like the definition of what is residual story drift. I'm going to talk about it in one um, in, uh, in a minute now. Okay. This item, as, as I highlighted before, this item was not existent in Chapter 16 in ACE 716. Let's have a look on, on it. This is from Chapter 16 in ACE 7. As you can see here, under 16.4.1, Global Acceptance Criteria, you are not going to find, find this criteria. It is only 1.1, 1.2, and there is nothing here. No 1.3, for example. And also, <clears throat> you are going to notice that instead of using the story drift and the new version, we are going to use the transient drift. I'm going to make another video about, about this later. But um, th this item, as I said, was not existent in Chapter 16 in uh, ASC 7-16. Okay. Okay, now regarding uh, this uh, residual drift, I'd like to highlight that AC 7 adopted the acceptance directly, this acceptance criteria, from the recent practice for tall buildings exceeding 73 meters in the 2022 edition to be compatible with common design practice for these structures. Actually, this item, we can say that it is being taken or at least it is going to be considered because it has been considered for a long time in uh, tool building initiative uh, documents or in tool buildings in general. So it's a common practice in tool building. So this is why uh, AC7, they started to implement it in their 
design code. Okay. Now let's go and give um, understanding of the meaning of the uh, residual drift. Residual story drift is taken as the maximum value of story drift in a structure at rest following response to an earthquake motion. What is the meaning of this? If we have an earthquake ground motion like this one, one for example, okay, it is an example earthquake that is going to hit the foundation of this building. If we are going to bring one point and we are going to plot the response, the horizontal or the lateral displacement at any point, you are going to have a plot similar to this. Sometimes we can plot the absolute uh, displacement of a point or sometimes we bring two successive floors and we get the drift. We call it interstory drift or drift. Some people they call it drift and both are okay. The point and drift or interstory drift is the difference between the lateral displacement at the two points at the top and bottom of this story. And we are going to plot this graph here as you can see. This graph is giving us a relation between the time of the earthquake excitation let's assume it's 50 seconds here for example and in the above and the vertical axis it is the interstory drift in centimeters so commonly we start from zero and after some <clears throat> perturbations of the building or the drift of this story we're going to find that it goes up and down up and down until that we found some like transient interstory drift big one that is going to happen here and then after that we are going to find the same perturbations are going to take place again. The point is from zero commonly whenever that we have the earthquake or the response of the structure in terms of drift under the earthquake excitation commonly we can find it making something like this if there is no residual drift. You are going to find the amplitude above and the amplitude below the neutral level here or the x-axis is going to be the same but whenever it has this jump okay down here we're going to find that as you can see the this point or this perturbation if we say this is the average here so between it and between zero this is what we call it the residual interstory drift and you are going to find it <clears throat> commonly after the earthquake after or following the response of an earthquake motion. So we want to get the permanent drift or permanent residual drift at rest condition. At rest condition. Because commonly whenever we have this case, let me show you an example. I'm going to jump a little bit here. Okay. So for example here, this is what the earthquake, the real earthquake is. Okay whereas the earthquake is having a residual drift. This part starting from here to here, this is at rest condition. So the earthquake was like exciting the building and the building was responding to it. And then at certain point, it was at rest. Okay. So similar here, it was starting from zero and then it goes down and then at rest condition. This is rest condition. From here, we can measure this is where we call it the residual residual drift we call it residual drift okay okay so this is the meaning regarding this point uh, that what is the meaning of residual drift itself residual drift is the unrecoverable portion of transient drift as we said now we are using the word transient not only drift transient means that under any uh, at any particular moment but after that the structure is going to be at rest condition that commonly occurs when a structure undergoes inelastic response and this is the issue here whenever the structure is is behaving in a inelastic fashion or it is undergoing inelastic response then you are going to find the structure is having permanent this is permanent this is after finishing the earthquake excitation you are going to find there is a kind of permanent residual drift on 
the building itself it's not like vertical exactly but it has some residual drift permanent we call it permanent unrecoverable portion of the transient drift is going to be there okay now let's let's go and let's understand more about about this issue about the new criteria regarding residual drift in uh, chapter 16 i'm going to uh, leave it for the next video